Fidel. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for coming and welcome to the 10th annual Dice Tower Awards. Hosted by Eric and Tom. Hey, we're super glad that you uh, are spending some time. You could be playing games here with us tonight. Um, it's really weird. This is our 10th one now. Has it been that many? Yeah. <laughs> That's crazy. Of course, the, the, like, except most of them we just did as a podcast that we recorded and talked about. I guess about. that's true, yeah. Uh, we did all different things. We One time we got together with other podcasters, had them record clips. That was fun to put together. Yep. Uh, one time I called up the designers and interviewed them, which was super fun. Um, <laughs> so the audio stuff takes a while. So now we're just doing it in person. We hope that you are glad that you're here. We hope that this convention has been great. And so a couple things before we get started. We have a few announcements. Some of them refer to the convention, but one of them does not. On the Dice Tower um, show, we have had many different people involved in our show. Recently, we have done a switch where we dropped our contributors and we uh, added a rotating third co-host. But we've had many great contributors over the years, mm -hmm. and one of them is here with us today. Yes, is Mr. Brian Counter in the audience tonight. Oh, oh Brian Counter is right over here. Now, Brian did a segment on our show for... How many episodes? Five, Five years, years worth. Uh, the, the Cult of the Old. That's right. Called. And, and so... Yeah, uh, Brian has a milestone coming up that we wanted to highlight. Uh, tomorrow, I believe, Brian has a 50th birthday. Is that correct? So let's uh, sing happy birthday to him. That's pretty easy. We're going to let Eric give us the key here. Mm. Happy birthday to you. Woo! Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Brian. Happy birthday to you. Now, another thing, these awards are a good amount of work. We get together and we have almost 100 different people from different podcasts, from the Dice Tower Network, yeah. uh, from people not in the Dice Tower Network, just a lot of people who play a lot of games and really like them. I work really hard at trying to find a diverse cast of people who like different games. I don't even vote in these awards um, except to break a tie, which this year I did not have to do. All right. You can just um, sit back and relax and enjoy the voting process. I can. But the voting process, we use some different various internet thingamabobs to do it, but the final voting process is handled by Jason Levine. He handles everything involved with that and does a really good job at it. And it is killing him because he's not even here to he's see. He's at work. <laughs> no, actually, it's pretty sad. But his work is launching this huge project today. There is no way to get out of it because, believe me, he would be he running tried. through the he door. He tried really hard. So... When you see him, you can thank him for putting this together. But you have a chance to see him tomorrow. He's doing a show. Not, not really. Um, but do you think Dice Tower Con is a pretty good con? I think we can agree on that, right? Yeah. Did you know that we do the con twice a year? It's just that the second time, it's on a boat. All right? It's on a Dice Tower cruise. And... and, and we talk about this a lot, but we really want you to come and join us on it. So there's a couple things we're doing in that regard. If you buy your tickets here, and you can do that at the Cool Stuff booth, just go there and tell them that you're interested in that. We'll give you a $50 discount if you do that here at the convention. Secondly, if you want to know more about the cruise and have questions and things, Jason will be here tomorrow at 1.30 p.m., and he will answer questions. He will talk your you know, spouse or friend into going with you. He's really good at that. 
Um, we also have uh, games. You're going to get free games for coming. There's a lot of exciting things, and we really want you to be involved in that. So, again, that, that's a convention special for the rest of the convention. If you go to the Cool Stuff booth, they'll give you $50 if you get it here. Tell them. They're prepared. They know what we're talking about. And Jason said he was flying in at midnight tonight, and he will not leave this convention um, again. He's here for the rest of the time. He will talk about the cruise till your ears bleed. And that's a promise. Um, and I think that's all the announcements we have. Let's hand out some awards, I guess. Yeah, so we're going to get started here. Um, also, we want to thank, we have a lot of people involved in these awards, and I want to, Jason put the videos together, Eric did the narration, Derek Porter, and folks, we have a really cool new setup here, right? We look slightly more professional than we did a little bit. 50 years ago, oh, 50, 10 years 50. ago. <laughs> We're Sorry, not, I got Brian Catter on the brain. We are old, but not that old. Right, but it's, it's a big difference. And a lot of that is due to Derek Porter in the back there running yes. our stuff. Really. <laughs> it's really exciting where we're going. Of course, we're not. There's going to be hang-ups, and there's still mistakes being made. But there's even from last year, there's a big change. So we're really thankful for that. Yeah. So we're going to get started here with the best artwork, and for that, our presenters are the Dukes of Dice. All righty, and this is for all presenters as you come up. Don't forget to uh, talk directly into the mic so people can hear you. Into so, the mic. Yes, well, okay, you don't need to, but no, you do, I do. <laughs> so this is not your first Dice Tower Con, right? This is our third Dice Tower Con, in fact. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Well, yeah. one of you has been like traveling around the world or something. That would yeah. be me. And you, you came back for this? I did? Just for this. He's leaving on a plane to Thailand tomorrow. What? No, not really. That's a complete lie. No. Oh. oh. Completely 100% That was a great story, up. though. <laughs> <laughs> he was gone for 14 weeks. So I had to do everything for 14 weeks. You do everything oh. anyway. Oh. <laughs> were you hosting the show solo or were you recording remotely? No. Oh, who, him? Oh, no. No, he was... No, he was out of it. Is the uh, show no, better? We had, we had a great rotation of media guests every other week, and then we had some local uh, Duke City locals that helped us out on the off weeks. So it was awesome. All right. Well, we're talking here about artwork and games. I think we should all agree that artwork, unless you like Eric and like splatter games, artwork is very important <laughs> in a game. Splatter's good. Splatter's good. Splatter's this, is the one, this is the one award splatter will never win. Yeah, all right, okay. fine. Okay, let's, okay. Let's, let's tell right. the truth here. Fine. But, I mean, artwork is a big deal, right? Oh, absolutely. And I think this year was, it was a really diverse selection of, of nominees. I mean, all the different art styles are completely different. And one game that inspired, or one set of artwork that inspired the entire game, which is pretty, pretty interesting. So hmm. that's how important artwork can be. And I think the artwork category gets tougher every year. I mean, because for all these, there's a lot of people who are still not hiring good artists, but most of the, the companies are doing a fantastic job you know, there's just some companies that every game they do, I just can't wait to look at the cards and the things that are on it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah absolutely. All right, well, should we take a look? All right, so the nominees for Best Board, board Game Artwork are... Best Artwork. Arkham Horror, the Card Game. Illustrated by Christopher Hosh, Ignacio Bazan Lazzano, Henning Ludvigsen, Mercedes Oppheim, Zoe Robinson and Evan Simonet. Published by Fantasy Flight Games. Innis, illustrated by Dimitri Bila and Jim Fitzpatrick. Published by Matigo. Islebound, illustrated by Ryan Lockett. Published by Red Raven Games. Kanagawa, illustrated by Jade Mosh. Published by Yellow. Psy, illustrated by Jakob Rosalski. Published by Stonemeyer Games. All right. Well, let's see here. These, you really sealed these. Yeah, that, this is the thing they do at all award shows. They're like, these envelopes are hard to open. <laughs> <laughs> it's to add to the suspense. And the winner is... Oh, wait, wait. Yeah, prediction from Eric. No, we're not no, doing that this year. We're not doing that? Okay. Oh. No, we don't okay. need that. All right. And the winner is... Side. <laughs> Illustrated by Jacob Brzezelski, published by Stonemeyer Games. 
side nominated for five awards tonight. This marks the most nominations of any game in 2016. The first Dice Tower Award for Jacob Rosalski and for Scythe. Yeah, now, I mean, the Scythe artwork has been incredible. I don't think uh, anyone from Stonemaier Games is here. No, we'll make sure anyone who's here is welcome when your award is called to come up, and we have a microphone on the podium to accept your award if you'd like to. If not, we'll give it to you at Gen Con, I'm sure, uh, or the next time we see you guys. But the artwork for Scythe was phenomenal. Beautiful. It was. Unbelievable. Yeah. yeah. Fantastic. As, as soon as I saw the artwork for the game, I wanted it. I didn't know anything about the game. <laughs> it just was amazing. In fact, my screensaver at home is mostly, well, not mostly. There's, <laughs> mostly a lot of really, <laughs> there's a lot of really weird stuff, but there's a lot of Scythe, <laughs> scythe mm. stuff on it. Am I lying, Sam? <laughs> Why does Sam know? <laughs> well, okay, never Because they used yeah. to work in that room. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Okay. I own the art book, the art book for Scythe. It's, it's gorgeous. All right, well, congratulations to Stonemaier Games, and thank you guys. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you. thank you. Here to present the best board game production, we have Roy Kennedy. Oh, we're tagging in and out? Okay, that's, that's a thing. Now, Roy, was, Roy is one of the most non-excited people in our, oh, yeah, our very network. Calm. I always sit still all the time. Yeah, yeah, you should be bouncing as we do this. Woo. So Woo. I, I, I knew that you would be really good in this award because you like production, right? For real, yeah. I definitely think production makes a game a lot, and it gets me excited and pumped about playing games. So I'm definitely excited to do the best production. Are you, like, do you paint miniatures like the other guys do? Yeah, I like painting miniatures. Like, miniatures make me really excited about games, and I'm not very fast, especially not as fast as Vernon or Rob or anybody I don't think, like that. I don't think Vernon, Vernon is cheating with some time continuum yeah, type he, thing. He's got a time turner that he just uses. He, he jumps in the TARDIS and goes back and then paints yeah. some more, and then... I don't know what he's doing, really. <laughs> um, I think when he sleeps at night, he's trained. He just paints, sets him aside, and he sleeps and gets it done. But yeah, I think that uh, production in games is um, something that can really get you excited, especially if you're excited about thematic games. It really like brings out the theme in a game, can really make the uh, game like come to life. All right. Awesome. Well, you shouldn't open it yet until we actually say who the nominees are. the nominees are. first. Nice. So, the nominees. <laughs> Best board game production. Conan, designed by Frederic Henri. Antoine Bouza, Pascal Bernard, Bruno Catala, Prague, Ludovic Malblanc, and Laurent Pouchon, published by Monolith. The Others, designed by Eric M. Lang, published by Cool Mini or Not. Mechs vs. Minions, designed by Chris Cantrell, Rick Ernst, Stone Lebron, Prashant Saraswat, and Nathan Tiras, published by Riot Games. Psy, designed by Jamie Stegmeier. Published by Stonemeyer Games. Star Wars Rebellion, designed by Corey Kaneska. Published by Fantasy Flight Games. That's a tough category, man. <laughs> yeah, it is. For sure. Lots of great games. This is the most exciting part. <laughs> <laughs> a big stack of stuff. Awesome. And the winner is Mechs vs. Minions. Thank you, thank you. Mechs vs. Minions was nominated for three awards tonight. This is the first Dice Tour Award for designers for Mechs vs. Minions. Now, this is one of the categories. I mean, the other four games were amazing. Yeah. But sure. when we first opened a box for Mechs vs. Minions, I almost fell over. Well, I think that's the point. The, the, it was designed to be an experience of simply opening the box. You open it up, there's, there's stuff on the top, and you're supposed to unbox it in a certain order and they hid mm -hmm. things in a particular order. It, it, was, it was an experience just opening the darn thing. For me, I um, had gotten, like, saw all the videos of everybody else, like, opening the game and doing unboxings and even me, like, getting the box in the mail and opening it up was still like, oh my goodness, this is so crazy. So I'm definitely excited about Mix vs. Minions winning. All right, well, congratulations <laughs> to Riot Games. Thank you, Roy. All right, our next... Um, presenter is Gary Pope to talk about small publisher. Now, for the small, those, uh, oh yeah, let's, let's give him a hand. Uh, 
Now we have a, a, the way we decide if someone's a small publisher or not is if they have five or less games in their catalog in the year 2016, which is when these awards are for. And do small publishers get enough love? Uh, nowadays they kind of are with Kickstarter and everything like that. It's like some of these small publishers, when they make games, it's almost as if they uh, already have been making games for years at this point, it seems. Right, I mean, it, it comes out, there's this huge Kickstarter, I'm like, wow, what else did they make? And the answer is nothing sometimes. <laughs> I mean, and I'm like, wow, that's for their first game. How did they get that word out there? But there's a lot of games that don't get that buzz. I mean, not everyone is Reiner Knizia, Eric Lang, and, you know, or Fantasy Flight Games, oh, Simon. Right, All right. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's getting kind of crazy. Like, for example, like, it's almost like, I would almost compare it to, like, if a, uh, a store, like a corner store nearby, you just all of a sudden like, release something that was like a Walmart. You're just like, wait, why this small Walmart just appear right at the corner of my street? It's like, eh, it's just another new little game, and that's all it is. But <laughs> that was a weird comparison, but yeah. <laughs> this award's also, no, it's a good comparison, I think. I think. Uh, it made sense it, in my head. <laughs> <laughs> this award's also interesting to me because each year, another company is not eligible. Like you mentioned, Ryan Lockett. He's no longer a, a small company. Right. I mean, he is, right? But that, because of our, the way we do it, it just changes each right. year, which allows different people to win the award and stuff. Mm -hmm. right, well, let's find out. Yeah, let's find out. So uh, let's check out the nominees for this year. Best game from a small publisher. Arkwright. Designed by Stefan Risthaus. Published by Capstone Games. Cottage Garden. Designed by Uwe Rosenberg. Published by Edition Spielweiss. Not Alone. Designed by Guilain Masson. Published by Geek Attitude Games. Role Player. Designed by Keith Mateka. Published by Thunderworks Games. Vast. The Crystal Caverns. Designed by David Somerville. Published by Leader Games. All right, what do we got here? I'm really excited about this. I love the small publisher yeah. category. Yeah. Because some of the, you know, the different awards are in so many nominations. The ones in here are not always necessarily in all the other ones. The surprising thing is that Vast was actually my first Kickstarter ever. Really? Mm -hmm. Yep, first Kickstarter ever. And let's are you showing the, the audience the answer? I, oh, yes, I am. So uh, the winner was uh, Role play Player, designed by Keith Matajaka, published by Thunderwork Games. The uh, Role Player is actually nominated for two awards tonight, and is actually the first Dice Tower Award for Keith Matajak and for Role Player, actually. So. That is pretty exciting, right? I mean, Role Player is like the very definition of the kind of game I think is wins this small publisher, right? I didn't yeah. know this company at all. I got the box and I was like, eh, we'll see. And I was really delighted to play this game. Yeah, it was really surprising. I mean, that game when it came out, also when I saw it for the first time, it seemed like one of those games where it was just like, this is gonna be a very bland game where I'm probably just gonna check it out and then walk away from it and never play it again. But it's still around. It's actually a really good game too on top of that. Right, and they just did the Kickstarter for the expansion, which did smashingly well because the base game was so good. Yeah. I don't think they're here tonight. <laughs> Someday they'll all be here. <laughs> all right. <laughs> but congratulations to Role Player. Thank you, Thank you Gary. Thanks. And presenting our best game from a new designer, we have Mark Street. <laughs> now, a new designer is always a tricky one to house someone a new designer. And sometimes people have won the war and people said, what? how does that happen? So for new designer, we say their first or second published game. And the reason we do that is because oftentimes their first game they've done 20 copies of. Um, <laughs> and, but, you know, again, we have a lot of established designers, but again, we're looking to see new people getting into the business and designing games. Absolutely. You, uh, do you, when you see an established designer, Mark, mm -hmm. that excites you, I would assume. Oh, absolutely, yeah. So, and when these new guys come along, you're always hesitant, wondering, but man, often things turn out really good. Right. By the way, how are you enjoying the convention, Mark? Oh, yeah, this is my first Dice Tower convention, right? Oh, wow. Is this your first one? Yeah, so... We see Mark at so many conventions yeah. that we forget sometimes we don't see him here right. as much. And it's been fantastic. You know, it, it, I've been with the Dice Tower over three years, and this is the crazy that this is my first time here. So. <laughs> Mark is a small media... I don't know, no, no, a new... A new no, I don't know how to say that. Wow. Mark is fantastic. <laughs> that's right, that's right. That's better. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> I was wondering where he was going with that. I know. I don't know where I was he's going with that. He's a small guy in the whole organization. That's right. But we like him. I he's know. nice. And just... Thanks so much, Tom. <laughs> <laughs> right here. Right here hurts. <laughs> All right. So the nominees are. Best game from a new designer. Adrenaline. Designed by Philip Neduk. Published by Czech Games Edition. Kingdom Death Monster. Designed by Adam Kutz. Published by Kingdom Death. The Manhattan Project. Energy Empire. Designed by Luke Laurie. Published by Minion Games. Terraforming Mars. Designed by Jacob Frixelius. Published by Stronghold Games. Vast. The Crystal Caverns. Designed by David Somerville. Published by Leader Games. Those are some pretty solid games for first or second design. Absolutely. All right. You ready for this? I'm, I am. I'm, I'm ready. You ready? You sure? I'm ready. If I can open the envelope, maybe. <laughs> maybe we should start opening the envelope. Why the things we going secretly? We need hair strips like they have on the deck of cards. Oh, that's a good idea. All right. All right. No surprise. Terraforming Mars. <laughs> read that. Read that. Okay. Yeah, okay. Okay. Terraforming Mars is nominated for four awards tonight. This is the first Ice Tour Award for Jacob and for Terraforming Mars. Yeah. Hand them their, hand them their things. Ah. Okay. Thank you. Oh, thank you very much. Ben. Thank you. Um, on behalf of Jacob Frixelius, designer of the game, and the entire Frixelius family who make up Frix Games, the development house, nine brothers and four sisters in the family. Whoa. Wow. I kid you not. <laughs> I accept the award on their behalf and thank you all for making the game the success it is. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you, Mark. Yep, you bet. Thank you, Mark. All right, now to present our best two-player game, we have Spencer and Laura from Married with Board Games. Hey. Hey. Hello. Hi. How's it going? Welcome. This is exciting. This is the first time I think you guys have been on our show. First time being here. First time on the show. Lots of first times. It's very Yay! exciting. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I'm so excited. All right. Is there confetti? No, nothing? No. Oh, ah. we'll do that. No, you know what? Steve Avery ruined that. <laughs> we, we, because, you know, Steve, we found. Steve, <laughs> Steve. We found that when you shoot something all over the stage that you then have to clean There's it up afterwards. There's a lot of involved, mm. yeah. Mm. They did that silly string thing, what, a year and a half ago? I, and it, it still burned into my memory. <laughs> yeah, sorry. <laughs> is, that a, is that a sore? Yeah, we there? were picking it out of the microphones. Uh, oh, that's a no. bad idea. All right, so yeah. two-player games. Two-player yeah. well. games, yes, and the nominees are. Best two-player game. 13 Days, The Cuban Missile Crisis, designed by Asker Harding Granarud and Daniel Skold Peterson, published by Jolly Roger Games. Arkham Horror, The Card Game, Designed by Nate French and Matthew Newman. Published by Fantasy Flight Games. Codex, Card Time Strategy. Designed by David Serlin. Published by Serlin Games. Star Wars Destiny. Designed by Corey Kineska and Lucas Litzinger. Published by Fantasy Flight Games. Star Wars Rebellion. Designed by Corey Kineska. Published by Fantasy Flight Games. All right. And the winner is... Star Wars Rebellion. Do we have any little fact factoids? Factoids time. Oh, there they are. There we go. <laughs> Star Wars Rebellion is nominated for four awards tonight. This is the first Dice Tower Award for Star Wars Rebellion. This is the fifth Dice Tower Award for Corny Konezka. He previously... What? There's he, more. Oh, Hang yeah. On. Okay. I'm getting there. He previously <laughs> won for Best Board Game Component, Star Wars Imperial Assault in 2014. Best Game of the Year, Star Wars X-Wing Miniatures Game in 20, 2012. Best Production Values, Star Wars X-Wing Mini Miniatures Game in 2012. And Best Production Values, Mansions of Madness in 2011. Nice. You know, Corey Kineska is one of those designers that... 
people don't know as well. He doesn't, you know, when he walks down the street, doesn't get like the, the people don't right. know. But, but he know has done work. a lot of great stuff, yeah. right? A lot of the great games from Fantasy Flight. And this, I mean, man, Star Wars Rebellion, they, you know, Fantasy Flight has the Star Wars license, right? And, you know, like, oh, what are they going to do next, you know? But they took Star Wars Rebellion, and it was Star Wars in a box. It really did a good job at bringing that to life. Uh, seen it played here, just a really fun game. Mm -hmm. Have you guys played it? Um, we haven't, but obviously with everything that Corey has racked up as far as uh, Dice awards, Tower Awards yeah. and whatnot, we definitely need to get on that. That's right. <laughs> this is this is a, a learning moment for all of us. Yes. 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 <laughs> all right, guys. Well, thanks so much for coming thanks, on. Thanks, guys. <laughs> The next category is cooperative games, and who better to present that award than Mr. Z... I'm giving you time to get to the front, Garcia. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I know why you weren't ready, because I just went out of order. Z, hang on a second. You can, you can, you can take a seat down there. Yeah. I went out of order, and I don't want to get in trouble Go with away. the people in the back. Yeah, it's not time for you yet. You that that was my out? mistake, yeah, sorry. Okay, good. I thought that was my mistake. That wasn't my mistake. <laughs> Definitely Tom Vassell's mistake there. Now we're talking about best expansion. Robert Geislinger. We're going to play the wrong video clip and everything. It'll be fun. Yeah, I know. Unfortunately, I caught it fast enough. I'm prettier than Z. You are? I am. You have better hat choices. <laughs> <laughs> All right, sir. Well, welcome. Now, you've been doing a lot at this convention. I, I have. You've been bidding a lot of money uh, at this convention. Yes, no. but I didn't spend a lot of money. You were outbid. I was outbid quite a bit. Mm. What was that one thing you were bidding really high on? The first Martians. Ah, yes. What was, where did you stop? Uh, 725? <laughs> I, st I thought that game would go for like $300 maybe. Yeah. Uh, what did for it go for? Eight hundred. There was yeah. There was a copy of First Martians that we're not going to see for a few months yet, um, and and it went for a lot. Yeah. yeah. Eight hundred dollars. Yeah. So you I almost think it was were about there. Yeah, I I got close. Expansions are fantastic for games. Maybe First Martians will have one someday. <laughs> <laughs> Is that my segue? Is that my? That's a, that's a segue. Yeah. <laughs> that's a good. Yeah. All right. That's good. I love expansions because I already know I like the game, right? And then when expansion is announced, I'm excited because I don't have to worry about, oh, is it good or not? Because I already like the game. So I'm assuming the expansion will make the game even better. They don't always, but they often do. Right. Normally, that's, that's the thing. Expansion. If I'm getting expansion, it's for something I already love, and it's just going to make it that much better, hopefully. Mm -hmm. But I love expansions. I love getting them. I love opening them. I love adding them in, and then Thomas will break your heart but I love then sorting them back out after I'm done playing, back into their original box and putting them on the shelf next to the base game. That doesn't break my heart, <laughs> it's just a waste of your time. <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> I, 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 I do it every time. I admire your patience. <laughs> I want to have the ease of choosing not to play with the expansion. <laughs> Is you that your favorite part of expansions? Do not that playing with when them? it's mixed in. <laughs> Well, the nominees are... <laughs> Best Expansion. Seven Wonders Duel, Pantheon. Designed by Antoine Bouza and Bruno Catala. Published by Repos Production. Psy, Invaders from Afar. Designed by Jamie Stegmeier. Published by Stonemeyer Games. Stockpile, Continuing Corruption. Designed by Brett Sobel and Seth Ben Orkin. Published by Nabu Games. Time Stories, Prophecy of Dragons. Designed by Manuel Rosua. Published by Space Cowboys. Time Stories, Under the Mask. Designed by Guillaume Montiage and Manuel Rosua. Published by Space Cowboys. See how I open that envelope nice and easily? <laughs> And the winner is Seven Wonders Duel Pantheon. Designed by Antoine Bauza, Bruno Cathala, and published by Repose Production.
You, you put the white paper down. There was a white paper. This is the second Dice Tower Award for Seven Wonders Duel. They previously won last year for best two-player game. This is the fourth Dice Tower Award for both Anton Bauza and Bruno Cathala. They previously won together last year for best two-player game, Seven Wonders Duel. Bruno has also previously won for best strategy game, Five Tribes, in 2014, best party game, Dice Town, in 2009, and Antoine has also previously won for most innovative game for Rampage in 2013, and best game of the year for Seven Wonders in 2010. Ooh. Quite the pedigree. Yeah, really it is. I mean, this was an expansion that people were really pumped about when it came out because the base game was so popular. Very rarely does the two-player version eclipse the original game, but mm. I think in this case it may have done so. Wow. I prefer it hands down over oh. the original. You know, I think I do too. <laughs> what about you, Eric? I, 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 don't, I don't own it. In the mic. <laughs> what? I don't own it. Shame. I... Have you played it? Yes. Shame. Oh, Shame. okay, okay. Because you're about to get a whole bunch of people Shame. offering to play you here. <laughs> yeah. No, I, I've played it. I just don't have a chance to play it very often, so it's not in my collection. Oh. Eric, I'm... see me after the show. Okay. What's going to happen? <laughs> All right. Well, thank you, Robert. <laughs> and now to present best party game, we have Crystal and Ambi from Board Game Blitz. <laughs> Which, if you look online, you can see them in a music video. Yep, yes. there's dancing and singing and everything. We got permission from the band Sweet to parody Ballroom Blitz. So yep. that's on our YouTube channel. Does yeah. that make it official, like it's part of the Sweet canon now? Well, based per their manager, I guess so. <laughs> I, I didn't know that you, yeah. that, I mean, I, I just assumed most people did parodies, they never got permission. You don't, there's argument that fair use laws cover you in, when you're parodying music, but we figured uh, Weird Al Yankovic is a big, uh, I love You're him, so I him. figured I wanted to go his route and ask for permission first. Wow, and so was it hard to do? No, we just emailed them. <laughs> and they said yes. And they said yes. We actually did wow. this before we started our podcast. <laughs> like, two years ago or something, we decided on the name and decided we were going to do this parody. Step one, <laughs> name. Step two, song parody. Yes, yeah. pretty much. Wait, Step wait, when did you, actually, release when the did you actually do it? It was what just the, recently, right? Right. Oh, we, yeah, didn't, yeah. we did the podcast for <laughs> nine months before the three of us ever met in person. Our co-host Cassidy isn't here today, but we had never met in person when we started doing the podcast. Well, no, that's fair, because we didn't meet either, well, we right? Hadn't, yeah. Well, no, we, before we started doing the podcast, we had met once. Did we? Yeah, at Origins. We announced <laughs> that we were doing the podcast together at Origins. We had been working together online for some time. Okay, but this isn't about us. This is about them. Yeah, okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Well, that's fantastic. We're talking about party games here. I've always felt party games are like the game that game, a lot of gamers online like look down on party games, which is crazy because they're the most played category of board it's games. True. I mean, more than anything else, my family and other people I know will play a party game. How can we look down on something that brings so much fun? Boo to you. I'm getting, <laughs> I'm getting rantish. There's sorry. games that you can play with literally anyone, and yeah. that's a really cool thing. Well, there's thing. some unfun people that right. would not play at party We games, don't count but. them. That's right. But I think this is the only category where I've played all of the games and enjoyed them. Oh, we chose yes. the right people <laughs> for the category? Yeah, we both yeah. played all five yeah. games and like them. So. Oh, nice. Yeah. All right, so let's see what the nominees are for Best Party Game. Best Party Game. Captain Sonar, designed by Roberto Fraga and Johan Lemonnier, published by Matigo. Codenames Pictures, designed by Vlada Fati, published by Czech Games Edition. Happy Salmon, designed by Ken Gruel and Quentin Weir, published by North Star Games. Junk Art, designed by Jay Cormier and Sen Fung Lin, published by Pretzel Games. Secret Hitler, designed by Mike Boxleiter, Tommy Morangis, and Max Temkin, published by Goat Wolf and Cabbage. You can't get that right, Eric? I, somebody <laughs> read the wrong thing. I don't know. Huh. As far as the audio listeners know, though, we sit it just right. Everything That's right. right. The audio podcasts are fine. <laughs> and the winner is Captain, Captain Sonar. Sonar.
Captain Sonar is nominated for four awards tonight. This is the first Dice Tower Award for Roberto Fraga and Johan Lemonier, and for Captain Sonar. You know, this is one of those games that when we first played it, I really liked it. And, mm -hmm. But I said, wow, you know, one of the problems is you need eight people really for it to work. And yet every convention I go to, I see it played. I saw it being oh, played yeah. today. Um, whenever I see it, I'm thinking, ooh. Maybe maybe we should play that game because it's that <laughs> fun. Yeah, it is yeah. so it's entertaining. Sure. It is great. I actually argued against it being a party game in one of our podcast episodes because <laughs> it's more of a board game party game than like a party game that anyone can just pick up and play. But I voted for it still because I like it so much. So, <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. Way, way, to, way to bring down the awards there. Uh, <laughs> no. I would have voted for it too. All Fantastic game. Are board game parties, but those so. are all yep. great party games, and congratulations to all the nominees, but especially to um, Captain Sonar. <laughs> right. Went out my mind. Thanks, everyone. <laughs> Thank you, guys. All right, to, to present best reprint, we have Hunter and Rebecca. Now this is a category as they're coming up that I just, I really, really love this category because um, we're always seeing games, new games, new games, new games, but it's good to see the old games come back and nowadays, if you say, oh, I wish this old game was reprinted, it probably will be and it will probably be amazing. Hmm. The reprints that are being done these days are phenomenal. Yeah, of course, right. a lot of people don't even know the reprints. Yeah, Rebecca and I got into gaming like eight, nine years ago. Some of our favorite games are reprints. War of the Rings, Through the Ages, hmm. things like that. Those are some of our favorites, reprints. We are firm believers in Vassal's Law. <laughs> yes. Yeah, because it's true. Yeah. Um, well, no, but I mean, really, I, I, I joke about that, and it's not a law, blah, 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 blah. But really, if a game is good enough, some publishers will be like, I can make money off that, and they'll reprint it. But I'm just pleased that they're not just thrown together these days. Yeah. They're, they're really thought through. Sometimes they streamline the rules a little bit. It's just really exciting to see these new reprints. Right. Beautiful. And the nominees are... Best Reprint. 51st State, Master Set. Designed by Ignacy Chevacek. Published by Portal Games. Arkwright. Designed by Stefan Risthaus, published by Capstone Games. Escape from the Aliens in Outer Space, designed by Mario Porpora, Pietro Righi Riva, Luca Francesco Rossi, and Niccolo Tedeschi, published by Osprey Games. Mansions of Madness, second edition, designed by Nikki Valens, published by Fantasy Flight Games. Robinson Crusoe, designed by Ignacy Chevichek, published by Portal Games. And the winner is, maybe, Suspense. Matches of Madness, second edition. Mansions of Madness, second edition, is nominated for two awards tonight. This is the second Dice Tower Award for Mansions of Madness. It previously won four Best Production Values in 2011. This is the first Dice Tower Award for Nikki Valens. All right, congratulations. This, 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 I am so excited about this game because this game shows just how much an app can change a game. Mm. And to all those naysayers out there who are against apps, play this. It, 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 it took one thing about the game, basically, that changed it and made it so much better. I mean, I, I, I like Mansion of Madness. Mansion of Madness 2, unbelievably good. Hmm. You, you agree, Eric? I, he uh, hasn't played it. <laughs> Shame. 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 <laughs> this is our I, new thing now. I want to. See, you didn't want to guess the game titles, but we're doing this now. Has I'm Eric so happy played it? We're doing something new. <laughs> All right, but really, if you haven't played it, get it. Congratulations to Mansion of Madness Second Edition. Yes. Okay, now I'm correct. I know this. Best cooperative game, Z Garcia. I'm right now. Sorry. Hi, Z. You got to come up twice. That's no one else did that. Yeah. I'm glad to be up here again. 
We're working together like a cooperative game. Oh, wow. That is the best segue of the night, actually. I have to give you that one. Five stars. Cooperative games. I love co-op games. There's just something about working together against a game. I can't tell you how many times I've, I've suggested gaming, get that, oh, I'm not really into gaming thing, and then I say, yeah, but in this one, we work together. I can help you throughout the entire game, and mm -hmm. suddenly those walls come down. People are in for some gaming. It's fantastic. I adore it. I love it. All right. So with that, here are the nominees. Best Cooperative Game. Arkham Horror The Card Game, designed by Nate French and Matthew Newman, published by Fantasy Flight Games. Harry Potter Hogwarts Battle, designed by Forrest Cruzon Creative, Tommy Mandel and Andrew Wolf, published by USAopoly. Mansions of Madness, second edition, designed by Nikki Valens, published by Fantasy Flight Games. Mechs vs. Minions, designed by Chris Cantrell, Rick Ernst, Stone LeBrand, Prashant Saraswat, and Nathan Tiras, published by Riot Games. Pandemic, Reign of Cthulhu, designed by Matt Leacock and Chuck D. Yeager, published by Z-Man Games. All right, and the award goes to... Let's get that in there. Yeah, get that sound effect. <laughs> okay. Gotta do, this. do you need help? We can work together. No, I just don't want... I'm, I'm hiding he it. Wants to oh, I'm not table. changing it, I'm just hiding it. Da -da 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 -da. All right, and the award goes to... Mansions of Madness, second edition, designed by Nikki Valens, <laughs> Fantasy Flight Games. This is the second Dice Tower Award tonight for Nikki Valens and for Mansions of Madness 2nd Edition. They previously won for Best Reprint, of course, and Mansions of Madness now has three total Dice Tower Awards, including the one from 2011. This is one that we got to play together the That's first right. time through, and I, I think you were a little wary at first, because I don't... Did you ever play the first edition? I never did, you know, and I always heard the tales of, wow, it's really hard to keep track of everything. It's very difficult to make sure you don't make a mistake, mm -hmm. and it derails the game. So I was certainly a little apprehensive, but I loved the theme. I love Cthulhu. And, and you love this, Cthulhu. <laughs> I, lo I, I just want to give him a big hug. And the, from the moment that app fired up, and you could tell it was so clean, so streamlined, I was in. It, it's such an immersive game. Such an interesting experience. It's, it's a very good game. Well, once again, congratulations to Manchester Madness, second edition. All right. All right, Z. Now to help present the most innovative game, we have Mandy and Suzanne. <laughs> They're very popular. Yeah, they are very popular. I love innovation. I love... The game, innovation? Well... Yes, that's true, okay. too. We actually auctioned it off earlier with we, all the extensions. Did. You got to read them all. I did. But, you know, so many companies make games that are the same again, again, again. It's good to see new stuff, I think. Oh, I hate new stuff. New oh. stuff is boring. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I just want to actually take a second and thank Eric for all of his efforts to pronounce these names yes. correctly and completely relieving the pressure on the contributors. It thank you so much. I, this is beautiful. You, you know I'm still going to get an email that I did a couple wrong, right? Yeah, but, but way more correct than I think the collective us would have accomplished, so thank you. Yes, exactly. There were a lot of emails back and forth with publishers <laughs> over the last week or two. Yeah, I'm really glad. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm the gladdest, because as good as I am at pronunciation, Eric's slightly better. <laughs> slightly. <laughs> I'm going to let that go. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. So you guys having a good time here? So good. This is my first Dice Tower Con, and I'm losing my voice. I, I, no. Again. <laughs> no. You know what this means? It just means you need to go to more cons to get that used to that talking the whole I time. I think I'm talking too much. Maybe that's what it is. Got to oh, work wow. that muscle, drink a lot of water. I know. Yeah, all right. <laughs> I feel Sorry. bad. I know. Anyone who went to Origins knows this is better. You sound better than Origins. Yeah, Origins was bad. Well, I'll tell you, this is my third Dice Tower Con, and it, this still stands up as one of the, as the best convention that I go to in a year. The people here are amazing. The crowd, like, honestly, all yeah. of this, 
like I go to BGG Con, I go to other local cons and things like that. Like I see people with the players wanted signs. The players wanted signs go up and then they come right back down because yeah, somebody's do. run it's over so and true. is doing that. And I see teacher wanted signs going up and then they come back down because somebody's run over to teach a game. And everybody here is is friendly and welcoming. It's really family friendly. I see kids running all around. There's great games, great vendors. Um, this is. I mean, other than the tornado oh my gosh, that, that so just scary. hit outside, this is this is a phenomenal convention. Hardly ever happens. Yeah. You can still come to the convention. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> the, the question is, did it open up some parking spaces? Did the <laughs> it did not. It's my it, car! <laughs> <laughs> so most innovative, this is an exciting category. I know. And games are getting more and more creative, and designers are getting more and more creative, and publishers are getting better and better at finding creative solutions mm -hmm. to game mechanisms and putting them out there in boxes that we can afford. So, I don't know. I, I thought this year's nominees were great. Yeah, I agree. I like the, you know, you get the little butterflies in your stomach when you're like, oh, this game's going to be really good. <laughs> I got that. I got that. Cool. <laughs> All right, so let's take a look at the nominees. Most innovative game. Captain Sonar, designed by Roberto Fraga and Johan Lemonnier, published by Matigo. Clank, a deck-building adventure, designed by Paul Dennett, published by Renegade Game Studios. Millennium Blades, designed by D. Brad Talton Jr., published by Level 99 Games. Mystic Veil, vale, designed by John D. Clare, published by Alderac Entertainment Group. Vast, The Crystal Caverns, designed by David Somerville, published by Leader Games. Oh, I'm excited. Yeah. It was, it's interesting to watch, I don't know if the audience knows this, but it's interesting to watch your faces as you see. I know, right? I heard some like, clapping. You're very transparent into what you, which ones you like and which ones you don't like. All right, okay. let's open this up. I don't want to do any secret reveals. So okay, here we go. let's take a look. All right, so I will take that, my okay. darling, and that is yours, okay? And the winner is Captain Sonar, designed by Roberto Fraga, Johan Lemonnier, published by Matago. Uh, this is the second Dice Tower Award tonight for Roberto Fraga and Johan Lemonnier for, oh, Cap oh, <laughs> for Captain Sonar. They previously won for Best Party Game tonight, so congratulations. Yes. There you go. Yeah, this game is really like nothing I've played at all. Yeah. Super fun. It's cr I literally play the same position in that game. It's what the do you play? easiest one where you control ready on to fire on. You know, oh. this control, because everything else is so confusing. I but the, the, <laughs> the transparency, the radio operator, is so cool. Ah, uh, the captain is where the, it's the, at. The finding of the path. <laughs> but you got to play with sound effects. Wait, we have three people now. Please tell me you like the engineer. I'm in. I'm All in. right. Yeah. Yeah. Let's do it. Yeah. Let's take it down. <laughs> All righty. Thank you, guys. We thank appreciate you. it. Thank you. Now to... Um, present the best strategy game. We have Brant and Brian from the Portal Game Podcast. Woo. Strategy, tactics. Hello. Hello there. Hi. So, so this is your first Dice Tower Con, correct? Yes. 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 Yeah. First for both of us. Yeah, we came and visited you, and <laughs> you, then you came back and visited us. Yes, huh? and I would like to make note that three out of the four people on stage currently are from Connecticut. That's true. <laughs> you're not, you, you're expecting a crowd to be happy about that? This is... <laughs> and, and Gary. Gary Pope is also from Connecticut. <laughs> Go Florida. Yeah. I mean... <laughs> I think we're outnumbered. All right, well. It was worth a shot, though. <laughs> nice. Yeah, so we've been playing some strategy games here. Have you? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I've been teaching a lot of heavy games, so a whole bunch of these. So I think this category is kind of fitting for us. I, I, I like it. I, I think it's an important category. We added it because, you know, we do a lot of different things, but I think it's important. To, you know, some people are saying, what is that game that offers that deep, crunchy strategy? So. Mm. Yeah, we definitely enjoy that. What would you say, Brian? Yeah, no, I mean, I think this is, <laughs> this is up there for me. I mean, these are some of my favorites for the year, so. Uh, yeah, I guess let's take a look at the nominees. Best Strategy Game. A Feast for Odin, designed by Uwe Rosenberg, published by Z-Man Games. Great Western Trail, designed by Alexander Pfister, published by Stronghold Games. 
Psy, designed by Jamie Stegmeier, published by Stonemeyer Games. Star Wars Rebellion, designed by Corey Kineska, published by Fantasy Flight Games. Terraforming Mars, designed by Jacob Frixelius, published by Stronghold Games. There's so much whispering going on out there. Wow, this is, this is suspense. Are you ready? That's the one I want to win. Are you excited? I'm excited. I'm super excited. And the award goes to Terraforming Mars. Designed by Jacob Frixelius, published by Stronghold Games. Is this the sheet? Is this the sheet? Here's my sheet. Uh, this is the second Dice Tower Award tonight for Jacob Frixelius and for Terraforming Mars. They previously won for Best Game from a New Designer. And here to accept the award. Wow. Really wow. I absolutely did not expect this at all. Um, this truly means that the Dice Tower Awards are not biased because... <laughs> Tom would never want me up here twice, ever. Um, but again, on behalf of, uh, what was that? You've been coming for many years waiting for this. Again, on behalf, really, of, really, uh, Jacob Frixelius and Frix Games and the entire family of Frixelius, I accept for them. And thank you all again for making this so popular. Thank you. All righty, well, thank you guys. I appreciate it. No problem. Go Swedes. All right. Now to present the best family game, we have Dan, but no Cora. <laughs> What's going on here? Thank you. It's good. Like the whole time Dan's been here, I think he's here. Is Cora here? Oh. Yeah. No, no one wants to see me Cora? at all. Oh. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's good. That they're giving some love to Dan. Too. Yeah, yeah. I appreciate it. Thank you very much. Have you adjusted to the time change yet? No, not at all. <laughs> I've had a grand total of four hours sleep all the time I've been here. So. But you're still alive. Barely. Barely alive. Because <laughs> they got out of here and he's like, we're, we're staying in a murderer hotel. <laughs> we're not playing these prices. <laughs> Sorry, that's not really on message, is it? The, the Great Value Hotel. The Dice Tower kind has amazing, great hotel for the price that you pay. <laughs> yep. So family games, this is something that you're excited about because you have a... A family, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you can see we have this banter planned out ahead of time. No, no yeah, family games are great. Um, Obviously, with Cora, I play many kids' games, but she, she's just transitioning now. We played Kirkle the other day, which was, which was absolutely ex fantastic. I've got a 10-year-old son. He's very much into the family games and things like that. And that wonderful way of just, just bringing everyone together, really, and, and, and spending some time together as a family, which doesn't involve any screens, doesn't involve shouting at each other, hitting each other, um, falling out. Well, falling, it does involve falling out, but, you know, a good, I like family games. Uh, let's have a look at the nominees. <laughs> Best Family Game. Harry Potter Hogwarts Battle, designed by Forrest Cruzon Creative, Cami Mandel and Andrew Wolf, published by USAopoly. Ice Cool, designed by Brian Gomez, published by Brain Games. Junk Art, designed by Jay Cormier and Sen Fung Lim, published by Pretzel Games. Karuba, designed by Rudiger Dorn, published by Haba. Sushi Go Party, designed by Phil Walker Harding, published by GameRight. All right, what do we got here? Okay, and the winner is Ice Cool. <laughs> this is the first Dice Tower Award for Brian Gomez and for Brain Games, right. and also they kind of released at the UK Games Expo, so I'm taking that as a, as a win That's for the true, UK. That's true, they did, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Go UK! Woo! <laughs> I give him that award. He's come up to get it. Oh, oh, hello. Hi. <laughs> Great. 
Uh, so I actually heard about iSchool for the first time on the Dice Tower Network when I was looking at what games I wanted to buy at Gen Con last year. Uh, I fell in love with the game, and a month later I um, took the job for events with the company, and it's um, an honor to receive the award. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you, Dan. Go get some sleep, man. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and now to present best theming, we have our very own Sam Healy. <laughs> I will burn the place down if Codenames is in here. I'm just saying. No, no he just meant if Codenames no is in here. No offense, CGE. Theming. I'm just saying. No, now this is one spot where Sam is very. Yes. Very theme. theme. Theme can make or break a game for me, and I think it's like that for a lot of different people as well. When you tell somebody what you're going to be doing in the game, it can really make them either want to play the game or not want to play the game. Stare at people for a couple of, you know, 4, 30, 45 minutes, confused by the clues that they gave you, or... <laughs> or... attacking a dwarven stronghold by a bunch of orcs. You also, know, we'd like to thank CG for the very large contribution to the Jack Vass Memorial Farm earlier. Hey, I never said I was good at PR. I'm just saying. <laughs> All right, so yeah, best theming. Uh, it, it, theming, I have it hanging a poster in my corner of the studio. Theme matters. And it matters so much to me, so I'm very, very happy to be uh, uh, presenting this award. So, without further ado, Let's take a look at the nominees for this year. Best Theming. Black Orchestra. Designed by Philip Dubarry. Published by Game Salute. Captain Sonar. Designed by Roberto Fraga and Johan Lemonnier. Published by Matigo. Role Player. Designed by Keith Mateka. Published by Thunderworks Games. Seafall. Designed by Rob Davio. Published by Plaid Hat Games. Terraforming Mars. Designed by Jacob Frixelius. Published by Stronghold Games. And the winner is... Dramatic pause. <laughs> Captain Sonar. But designed by Roberto Fraga and Johan Lemonnier. Published by Matigo. It really does just embrace that theme. You know, you, you really, you feel like you're kind of in a submarine. Yeah, absolutely. That's one of the cool things about it. I mean, without being, you know, uh, what do you call that? That, uh... never mind, moving on. Uh, <laughs> this is the third Dice Tower Award tonight for Roberto Fraga and Johan Lemonnier uh, for Captain Sonar. They previously won for Best Party Game and Most Innovative Game this year. So that's a three-peat in one year. Not I bad. I was not expecting that, honestly. Congratulations again, yeah. Captain Sonar. All right, and our final award of the night is Game of the Year, presented by... Oh, us. us. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I'm going to need the envelope, I guess. Yeah. I'm very excited about this. See, it gets delivered our way. I, right. I mean, this was a tough category. This was there a were a lot of really year. strong games. There were um, a lot, it, very strong ones in each of the categories. It's hard to pick one to be the favorite. I had a lot of trouble with this one. Well, let's find out. Let's take a look at the nominees. Game of the Year. Adrenaline. Designed by Philip Netter. Published by Czech Games Edition. Captain Sonar. Designed by Roberto Fraga and Johan Lemonnier. Published by Matigo. Cry Havoc. Designed by Grant Rodiak, Mikal Oraz, and Mikal Walsha. Published by Portal Games. A Feast for Odin. Designed by Uwe Rosenberg. Published by Z-Man Games. Great Western Trail. Designed by Alexander Pfister. Published by Stronghold Games. Innis. Designed by Christian Martinez. Published by Matigo. Mechs vs. Minions. Designed by Chris Cantrell, Rick Ernst, Stone LeBrand, Prashant Saraswat. 
and Nathan Tiras, published by Riot Games. Scythe, designed by Jamie Stegmeier, published by Stonemeyer Games. Star Wars Rebellion, designed by Corey Kaneska, published by Fantasy Flight Games. Terraforming Mars, designed by Jacob Frixelius, published by Stronghold Games. Yeah, I'm glad I didn't actually get the vote this time because that would have been really tough. <laughs> it is tough. I have no idea who's going to win this one. I'm, I might have already seen you, the you already know. Yeah, I do. Okay. And the award goes to... There's why, a lot there's of paper. Three, there, why, do I have to read like a million things? I'll do this. <clears throat> the award goes to... La La Land, designed by Tom Bass. <laughs> All right, now look, we give Jason a lot of garbage. That's funny. That's, that actually says that. That's amazing. Hold on. There's been a mistake. There's no good way to say this, but the award goes to Scythe. Designed by Jamie Stegmeier. Published by Stonemeyer Games. This is the second Dice Tower Award tonight for Cy, the previously won for Best Artwork. This is the third Dice Tower Award for Jamie Stegmeyer. He previously won for Best Game Expansion, Tuscany Expand the World of Viticulture Culture in 2014, and Best Small Publisher for Euphoria in 2013. I have no idea what That's all these are doing. Yeah, who cares about it's all like that? Credits. I don't know. Okay, but hey. Congratulations to the Stonemaier Games again. Fantastic. I see people playing Scythe everywhere. Oh, yeah. Man, that's, that's good. Very good. That was very... <laughs> Man, he got us. All right, good. All right, Jason put all that together. We really appreciate that. So big thank you to Jason Levine and for Derek and for everyone else who helped put these awards together. And especially the companies who made the games. All right, so for 15 minutes, we'll do some Q&A. Matt, the mic, grab that mic up there. Sam and Z will come and join us, and we'll do our typical Q&A that we do. If anyone has any questions, Matt will run and a let you ask one or two questions for us. So if you want to ask questions, just raise your hand, and Matt will bring you the microphone. And if no one raises their hand, then we're done. Then we're done, yeah. We're done. We got one all the way in the back. One guy. Run, Matthew. One question. It's going to be a great question. What's La La Land? <laughs> <laughs> hey, how are you doing? For My Little Scythe, have you guys heard about that being developed? It's a guy in Canada that developed My Little Pony and then Scythe. And... I think he's trying to get it more mass produced, but right now he has it to where you can like download stuff and you can build it yourself. I'm not a real good handyman or a Bob the Builder, so is there anybody that can reach out to him in Canada and help him out with producing so it can get mass produced? Because from what I understand, it's supposed to be a really good game in which they dumb it down for the kids and it's all My Little Pony themed. That is definitely the most unusual question we've had yeah. at one of these. It's up there, yeah. I mean, I, I've heard of this thing. You and, have? Oh, I knew this existed. It, I, I just don't, I can't imagine that it would ever happen, that Hasbro would say, yeah, all right, you can make a, a, a My Little Pony skin on this hobby board game. I, it's such a long shot, unless, unless you had someone involved with My Little Pony that was a fan of the game, that might you might have an inroads, but it would be, I just, I just don't see it happening. Huh. It's developed by the daughter, and the father, and she's really into the show. And from what I understand, they each got approval from the mother, and they decided. Well, if it happens, it happens, but I'll eat a shoe, I think. <laughs> I mean, I would be really surprised, I think. But wow, I mean, it, stranger things have happened, you for never sure, know. in gaming. Um, huh, interesting. Stranger Things was a great show. <laughs> That's a segue right there. <laughs> Any other questions? I think they're behind you, Matt. Oh. She had her hand up. Oh, great. 
Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> Do I have their hand up? Agree. Jason Levine just texted us and said we're doing a good job. <laughs> wow, he's working hard. He's watching on the internet. <laughs> Hi, Jason. Uh, uh, my first question is, um, can we make sure that a recording of that is uh, kept in a safe place in case it does get published? I would like to see Tom eat a shoe. We just streamed it, so it's there. <laughs> and I wanted to ask, because it seems like there's a lot of them coming out, uh, especially this year, if a uh, category you might consider is uh, team games. Like Captain Sonar could be considered a team game, but there are a lot of uh, one v many where you have a team playing against a single player as opposed to a normal co-op that's against the game that I think makes it a little bit more uh, challenging and engaging because you don't know what's going to happen, you can't predict it, it gives a lot more replayability. So, What we do each year is we look at possible new categories to add to the ward, but one thing that we have to do to add them to the ward is there has to be at least five really good games in that category. I don't think one verse all is there yet. I think there's several that might come out over the course of the year. I just don't know that there's enough for a category. And we don't ever want to have one where there's like two right. nominees. And that's what and we're worried about the most. You don't want to have like just two options. And, and we also don't want to have too many awards, I guess. We already do a lot, right? And we could do like, you know, the best deck building game, the best. And we've considered things like that, best deck building game, mm -hmm. best things. But we need, there needs to be enough, even cooperative games sometimes we wonder, will there be enough? And, there is, for now, but that, that, that's why we haven't done it yet. We're going to do a top ten on that someday. Best one versus many. Hmm. Okay, great. Sounds good. My question is for Eric. Have you ever lost your voice? And if so, what did you do to get it back quickly? And if not, how in the world did you manage that? Uh, take notes, Mandy. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> So once you lose your voice, there's not a whole lot you can do other than rest it. Dun, 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 dun. If it's gone, yeah, yeah, you just have to not talk. Uh, in order to prevent that, I drink a lot of water, a lot of tea with lemon and honey when I'm working in the booth. Um, I try not to push at a convention like this. It's very easy as the noise level goes up for you to... Try and get louder so that people can hear you and you're trying to teach a game to everybody in a loud convention space. And I have to con continually tell myself to stop doing that because that's what blows out your voice. Also, staying up too late. Sorry, guys. Uh, you know, that, that, so a lot of convention behavior is not conducive to me having a voice on Monday. But have you lost your voice was the question. I have. I and, have lost it. And what happened? I, I couldn't work. Um, there was actually a, a, one of the Dungeons and Dragons books that I was doing that I started a scene and we broke for the weekend or something and um, I got sick and couldn't work for a good week and, and there were two or three days there that we would try and start and I would try and match what my voice sounded like in the previous paragraph and I couldn't do it for two or three days. My engineer would come over, we'd try and I'd go, no and we'd have to take another day of rest, and I'd try again. No, it took, it took a good week for me to get my voice back. Hmm. Uh, my question is, is there any game that was a surprise to you that did not make the nominee list, list for any of the awards? That we were surprised didn't make it on the nominee list. Hmm. Huh. <laughs> I'd have to go back now and yeah. look at all the games. I mean, for game of the year, no. I was pretty, those were the games I thought would make it. Okay, that might be it, maybe. But you know, I think maybe Clank, I don't know was why Clank, Clank wasn't ineligible? nominated. Was that last year? No, Clank was nominated. No, Clank was nominated for one was, game, but I mean, I was surprised yeah, it wasn't right. nominated for more. Be because Clank just seems to be growing in popularity. I just keep seeing people playing it, playing it. I think maybe it's just a slow burn effect that, you know, I think Clank's going to still be around in five, six years, and some of these games may not be. I, but that would be... I don't know. I think for me, maybe um, Pandemic Iberia. I saw Pandem Pandemic no, Random Cthulhu no, was nominated. No. What? no, I... Never mind. Actually. I, I actually I'm, agree I'm, with you. No. I agree with you. No, no. I, I think... I think Iberia was a better game than Cthulhu. Did you see anybody here playing too, yeah. it? 
I saw a man in the back who has it in his bag. I just walked by your bag and I peeked in it. I'm sorry. I apologize. <laughs> <laughs> He's creeping on your game, man. <laughs> he just has this sense that he senses pan what? Someone's pandemic. What? Pandemic? around Parents, here. hide your games. Z Garcia, he is a coming. <laughs> is that a cooperative game? <laughs> um, so I'd like to know, if you have any, what would be your favorite educational game? Like one for maybe a school setting. Pandemic Iberia. <laughs> Real talk. Educational game. I want to say like Freedom the Underground Railroad. That's pretty strong. Mm -hmm. Although it's been used in you know upper grade classrooms for that sort of thing. Right. Um, there's and teaching guides I think for using that. Really, a lot yeah. of academy games is, games would be good for that because the mechanics that they employ are not that hard to grasp. So you can actually teach them uh, pretty easily, and they do give a lot of uh, insight into uh, historical times. So well, they, they, wh whatever the game is is built around. They produce books as well. I mean, yeah. they go hand in hand. They've, if I'm not mistaken, they they have lesson plans, sort of. I mean, guides to lessons based mm -hmm. on a combination of of uh, media. You know, written media they produce and and board games. So that's a good company to look at. If yeah. you're going younger, uh, I, I really like, I, I always mention Secret Code 13 plus 4 from Haba, uh, where you're rolling dice and combining them to get past different numbers on, a, on your way to a, a treasure in the center of a laser maze sort of thing. Um, and I, I like that one for, for teaching addition, subtraction, multiplication. If you could get a designer, a publisher, and a license and make them into one game to make your dream game, what would it be? That's a cool question. Oh, boy. <laughs> um, wow. I'd like to have Riot Games be the publisher. <laughs> okay, that's the publisher. That's a good one. Yep. Uh, designer? I mean, Eric Lang seems obvious, but let's go with... Um, no, we'll go with Ryan Lockett, but with, mm. but with the Riot Games publishing. He can still do the artwork. He can still do the artwork, but with their publishing. Theme, grocery store. <laughs> They're going to make a grocery store game someday. <laughs> grocery store is your dream? I want to go theme? shopping for food. <laughs> it's fun. You have a sickness, my friend. How about, how about sorting hats? Just a bunch of hats, and you have to sort them. No, those, I think they're already in the about that, did you, did you make it? No. <laughs> how about Richard Launius, mm -hmm. Cool Mini or Not, mm -hmm. Stargate? Okay, okay, good, good. Oh. I think, I, well, I mean, Richard does really well with theme stuff. I think he'd be able to make an adventure game that Stargate deserves. And I just want neat minis in a Stargate deck. All right, I'm going to go with, um, I'll go with Bruno Catala. <gasps> Shocking. I'll go with yellow, and I'll go with a like, theme like where you paint murals, and you go to like a paint school, and you learn how to uh, do uh, paintings. So you basically want to remake Fresco. <laughs> it's Kanagawa. Go play it. It's great. <laughs> So your dreams have been fulfilled, is Yay. what you're saying. You're so lucky. <laughs> Pinch me. Uh, let's see. I would probably go with... Uh, um, I, I would imagine Cool Money or Not would be my definite go-to at this point as far as overall production value. But uh, I'm going to take a step out. I'm going to say I want Cool Money or Not to put out a Warhammer 40K game with... Eric Lang and Richard Lanius as the designers. How come he doesn't get any garbage for saying Eric Lang? Oh. No, you can't give me any garbage. The man's amazing. <laughs> Just saying. It's good. It's good. I'm afraid of Sam. I, well, that's, I'm sitting right here. <laughs> were, were you here for the top ten list? I'm sitting right here. Yeah. <laughs> Well, I, heard, ooh, I recently heard that you are not a big fan of um, 
was sea, what was it called? Seafall. Is that the one? Who's he, who's he talking who's he, to? I don't know. He keeps Mike, what are you doing? Him. I'm are sorry. I have a question. You, you don't like Seafall, right? Right. If they came out with Seafall, second sale with a revamped rule set, would you give it a second chance? Well, that's a good question, actually. Huh. All right, Mike. Yeah, way to, way to fix that. <laughs> I would. No. <laughs> I... I, I, I really like nautically themed games. I wanted to like Seafall. I really, 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 really wanted to like it. But I just didn't. And if he, you know, fixes, quote unquote, fixes it, and then releases it with a better, what, you know, yeah, I want to give it a try. I think so too, because I think that's like the only Rob Davio game I've ever played that I didn't like. Hmm. I mean, he does a really good job on stuff. So I would just assume that they would change some things, you know, take the feedback. Yeah, I, 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 I would try it. We yeah. just have to find someone to replace Z yeah, in our Z's game. Yeah, Z's a one-trick pony. If you, if you, he, you got one shot with him. If, if you don't grab him on the first game, he's out. You know what, though? That is true for me in a lot of games, though. <laughs> or there's the first some publishers 12 games, or yeah. designers. If I hate their first game, their second one, I'll be like, ah, I don't want to play it. Z, you do it. No, I'm not like that when it comes to someone's career. They're, they're learning. Your first game is probably not going to be your best game ever if, you know, you make, make several games. But a game that you could take another stab at, especially a game as, as large and as involved as Seafall, they'd have to change so much that, no, I'm not going to try it again. They, they would have to rewrite, literally, the book. So, no. So close-minded. All right. <laughs> Let's take one last question. This has been so much fun. Um, my first day at the con, I'm so glad that uh, I took my advice of my friends who back in November told me to buy tickets. And so uh, I, I just enjoyed it so much so far. So I thank you so much for all that you do. Um, something that would really complete the experience for me today, would, would all four of you be willing to sign the copy of Pandemic Iberia yeah, that I bought at the con today? I'd really appreciate that. Whoop. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> Thanks. Does anybody know what else he has in his bag? <laughs> All righty. Well, once again, our entire Dice Tower network and everyone involved, even Mike in the back and everyone, we want to say thank you to all of them. They did a great you, job everybody. today. <laughs> and until next time, I'm Tom Vassell. I'm Eric Summerer. I'm Z Garcia. And I'm Sam Healy. And you've been listening to The Dice Tower. Thanks for listening. Promotional consideration has been provided by game publishers in the form of review copies of games. This episode was recorded on July 7th, 2017 in front of a live convention audience. Next week, it's a new special guest armed with a new top 10 list. Support for this podcast comes from listeners like you. in their hour of need. Find out more about the fund's mission and how you can help at jackvassal.org. The Dice Tower is produced by Tom and me with production assistance from Itai Perez, Derek Porter, and Rob Searing. Our theme was composed by Timothy Pinkham. The story of what happens when Sam drops a banana peel on the floor provided by Z-Fall. <laughs> And hosting is provided by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games at great prices at CoolStuffInc.com. We love feedback. Visit the Dice Tower Guild at BoardGameGeek.com. Email us at Dicetower at gmail.com or follow us on Facebook. And, of course, you can find more from the Dice Tower Network, including Flip the Table, Board Game Corner, Four Corners of the Board, Rolling Dice and Taking Names, The Family Gamers, The Dukes of Dice, The Party Gamecast featuring The Party Gamecast, and Board Game Blitz at Dicetowernetwork.com. Until next time, from all the gang at the Dice Tower... Have fun gaming! All right. Thanks so much, guys. Have a fantastic night. We'll see you tomorrow, maybe at the flea market. And have a great big day tomorrow. Great big day. Great big day. Great big day. It's a great day.